Hello all, this is Anita. Welcome to the Machine Learning Video Lecture Series. In this video, we will discuss the evaluation metrics, their importance and how to choose the best one. And later in this video, we will also discuss the different types of evaluation metrics. So let's get started. Machine learning models are used to analyze and interpret the data. But how do we measure how good or bad these models are? So the answer of this question is evaluation matrix. So first let us understand what is evaluation matrix. So the evaluation matrix are quantitative measures used to assess the performance and effectiveness of the statisticals or the machine learning models. So when evaluating the machine learning model, it is crucial to assess its predictive ability, generalization capability and the overall quality. So there are different types of evaluation metrics available. So depending on the specific machine learning task, some of the common evaluation metrics are precision, recall, F1 score, mean absolute error, mean square error, R square, adjusted R square. So the choice of the evaluation matrix, it depends on the specific problem domain and the type of data and the desired outcome. Uh, so first you understand why it is important. So to assess the performance of the model. So the evaluation matrix provide a qualitative measure of how well the model perform on a given task. So this is essential to understand the model strength and weakness and deciding whether to deploy it to the production. The second one is to compare the different model. So this evaluation matrix can be used to compare the machine learning models trend on a same data set to solve the same problem. Next one is to tune the hyperparameters. So evaluation matrix are often used to tune the hyperparameters of the machine learning model. The hyperparameter controls the model training process such as learning rate and the number of epochs. So by adjusting these hyperparameters, uh, the data scientist or the um, uh, users can improve the performance of their model. Next one is to monitor the performance of the model over the time. So this evaluation matrix can be used to monitor the performance of the machine learning model over the time. Next one is to identify the overfitting. So overfitting occurs when model learn the training data too well and cannot generalize to the new data. So the next one is how to choose the best evaluation matrix. So the first one is choose the right evaluation matrix. Uh, so here we are having the two models like one is the classification model. So for a classification model you can choose the accuracy, precision, recall and F1 score as an evaluation matrix and if you are working on a regression model or you are uh, for a regression model, you may use the mean absolute error and mean squared error and the root mean square error as an evaluation matrix. Then split the data into the training and test set. Third one is train and evaluate the multiple models. And the last one is select the best model. So before selecting, you are comparing the model's performance and then you are selecting the best model. So this is how you are choosing the best evaluation matrix. Now let us understand the type of evaluation matrix. So there are two types of evaluation matrix. The first one is regression matrix and the second one is classification matrix. So in this video, we will be focusing on the classification matrix and in the next video we will see the regression matrix. So the classification matrix is about predicting the class level given the input data. So here uh, suppose uh, your problem is a binary classification problem. So there are only two possible output classes that is the uh, true or the false or yes or no. In multi-class classification, more than two possible classes can be present. So here, the precision recall 
accuracy, confusion matrix, log loss and AUC ROC are the some of the most popular metrics for the classification problem. So the confusion matrix. So the first one is the confusion matrix. So the confusion matrix is defined as the table that is often used to describe the performance of the classification model on a set of the test data for which the true values are known. So here you can see the confusion matrix. This is another definition. Confusion matrix is a performance measurement for the machine learning classification problem where the output can be two or the more classes. Or in another way, we can say that it is a table with combination of the predicted and the actual values. So this you can see with the help of this. So it is a table of, with combination of predicted values and the actual values. And uh, it contain you can see true positive, false positive, false negative and true negative values. Uh, so where this true positive is nothing but the we predicted positive and it's positive or it's true. So that is a true positive. True negative is the we predicted negative and it's true. So that is true negative. And false positive it is also called as a type 1 error where we predicted positive and it's a false. And false negative is the, it is also called as a type 2 error where we predicted negative and it's a false. So this is how we use the confusion matrix. Now let us understand this confusion matrix with the help of example. So suppose, uh, in a, uh, suppose we want to classify the problem as the uh, like spam detection system and where we want to classify the email as a spam or the non-spam. So suppose we are having some data like here you can see this is the confusion matrix. So total, uh, total 200 email samples are there. So out of that you can see here uh, these are the actual one and these are the predicted one. So actual one are the 80 so 60 plus 20 so 80 emails are actually spam in which model correctly identifies the 60 of them as a spam and among the 200 email 120 emails you can see here 20 plus 100 120 emails are not spam in which model correctly identifies 100 of them as a not spam and among the 200 email, model incorrectly identifies 20 as a non-spam email. That is what the, you can see here 20. So this as a false positive. And among 200, model miss the 20 spam email as identifies them as a non-spam. So this is a false negative. So after all these things, we are just drawing the table with all these combinations. So this is how we are uh, using the confusion matrix. Now the next one is the accuracy. So accuracy simply measure uh, how often the classifier correctly predicts. So it is a ratio of number of correct predictions and the total number of predictions. So here you can see this is the formula of accuracy. Accuracy is equal to number of correct predictions divided by total number of predictions. So this is again the formula of the accuracy. Accuracy is equal to true positive plus true, true negative divided by uh, TP plus uh, TN plus FP plus FN. That is the total number of predictions. Now let us understand the precision. So precision measures the proportion of true positive predictions among all the positive predictions made by the model. So it is calculated it is calculated by dividing the number of true positive by the sum of true positive and the false positive. So this precision evaluates the accuracy of the positive predictions made by the classifier. So you can see this is the formula of the precision. Precision equal to TP divided by TP plus FP. So this precision is useful in the cases where the false positive is higher concern than the false negative. So that time we use the precision. Now the recall. So recall is also called as a sensitivity. So this uh, it is a measure. It measures the proportion of the true positive predictions 
among all the actual positive samples in the data set. So this is the formula of the recall. It is calculated by dividing uh, the number of true positive by the sum of true positive and the false negative. Uh, so this recall is useful matrix in the cases where the false negative is higher concern than the false positive. So that time we use the recall. Now we we'll understand the F1 score. So F1 score is a harmonic mean of the precision and the recall. It is used to balance the trade-off between precision and recall. So it is maximum when precision is equal to the recall. So it is also called as like it is a weighted average of the precision and recall. So this is the formula of the F1 score. Now we will understand the AUC and the ROC curve. So this AUC stands for Area Under Curve Receiver of Operating Characteristics. So it is a metric used to evaluate the performance of the binary classification model based on its ability to distinguish between the positive and the negative samples. So it is created by plotting here you can see it is created by plotting the true positive rate on the y axis and the false positive rate on the x axis so you can see here and this auc roc uh, score is the area under the roc curve and it ranges between the 0 and 1 so here you can see it ranges between the 0 and 1 so this one uh, representing the perfect classifier and here you can see in between this 0 0.5 representing the random guesses. Uh, so in this suppose we are considering some uh, uh, some samples are there and based on that we are uh, showing the performance. So here you can see greater the AUC the better the performance of the model at different threshold uh, between the positive and the negative classes. Uh, so AUC is equal to 0 means a classifier would be predicting all negative as positive and the vice versa and when AUC is the 0 0.5 means classifier is not able to distinguish between the positive and the negative classes and 1 means it perfectly uh, classifying the positive and the negative classes. So here you can see it provide a single scalar value that summarizes the overall performance of the classifier across all possible threshold value and this, this is how we are calculating the true positive rate and the false positive rate. So true positive rate equal to true positive divided by TP plus Fn and false positive rate equal to Fp plus uh, divided by Fp plus true negative. So this is how we are calculating the AUC and the ROC. Now take a pause here and tell me why it is important to carefully select the evaluation matrix in the machine learning and how can this choice impact the interpretations of the model performance. So after done resume the video. So the answer of this question is carefully selecting the evaluation matrix in the machine learning is crucial because it directly influences how we assess the effectiveness of our model. So the different metrics serve the different purposes and provide the insights into the various aspects of the model performance. For example, the accuracy measures the overall correctness of the predictions while the precision and recall focuses on the ability of the models to correctly identify the positive cases and F1 score combines the precision and recall offering the balance assessment. Now the choice of the evaluation matrix can significantly impact the interpretations of the model performance. For instance, in a situation with imbalanced data set, the accuracy may be misleading or the model may achieve the higher accuracy by simply predicting the majority class. So ignoring the minority class of interest, in such a cases, precision recall F1 score provide a more accurate reflection on of the model's ability to identify the relevant instance. 
so these are the references that i that i have used for the uh, presentations thank you